Hello and welcome back to a special edition of the TNC podcast. It's episode number 59 and joining me is the man responsible for the third highest viewed TNC <laughs> podcast ever. Ratings. Behind a certain Ross Martin and Angus Gunn. Oh. I've brought this man back solely for the views. Uh, ben Bloom, how, how are you doing, doing? Mate, from the Bloom We got in podcast. trouble with the handshake last time, didn't we? Yeah, what happened? Chris didn't shake your hand, did he? But he did, for, for the listeners, yeah. that was a complete work. He, yes. did, he did say before... Yeah, I'll shake your hand at the end. We'll do a little bit of funny business at the start, but yeah. no, very very happy to be here and very happy to be behind Russ Martin and <laughs> Angus Gunn, who's gone to Southampton, Southampton. for millions of millions. Thirteen million, yeah. Wow. So maybe that's your, sort of your career. Maybe you'll be <laughs> second choice keeper at Premier League club after this. Who knows? Yeah, uh, and just sure to say, that. Chris um, hasn't been dropped from the TNC podcast after last year's antics. He's back in Norwich. We are in London. Um, Apparently living the dream, but this is Ben's... quite a plus, Jack. Yeah, but but you've just watched me eat super noodles. <laughs> uh, that's as good as the London life gets, my friends. Jack is um, right in central, right out the window. There's a lovely park and lots of attractive people, isn't there? Um, yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah, basically. Um, anyway, we're here not to talk about the attractive people at the park. It is, of course, the East Anglian derby this weekend, and as a is... tummy, you know what? Like, I'm not as nervous as I was last year. I kind of feel like this whole Far, and I'm sure we'll get to it. This whole Do you get worse of... for the away game? I'm much more nervous when I'm in Carrow Road than when I'm in Portman Really? Road. Yeah. I kind of feel like going away from home, there's not as much to well, lose. Well, your record at Portman Road is Isn't so bad. strong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, let's flip it back to last season quickly. Um, okay. We spoke after the, I think, the away game in which James Madison popped up and scored. Let's talk about the home game. It was towards the end of last season, wasn't it? And... You guys must have thought you'd won it. Chambers pops up in, was it the 90th <sighs> minute with that header? 89 minutes. It's, we've given this run, you, you never quite think. I remember um, the goal went in, mm. and uh, this is not a cheap pop at, at Norwich. It's not the greatest view from no, it's um, not. from that stand. It's very um, lightly um, tiered, isn't yeah. it? So I, I didn't really even know who'd scored. You know, Waghorn smashes the cross in as he does. In it goes, and everyone's going crazy. It's Chambers. And I remember my heart's pumping and I said what I always say, don't F this up. Yeah. And then the and ball... you had a chance straight after it as well. Oh my God, yeah. e- much easier chance. Yeah, yeah. So Knudsen goes down the left and bless him, he's... if that had been David McGoldrick going down the left, we would have scored and won 2-0 yeah. and the stadium would have emptied. Knudsen overhits it. Um, rightly, Norwich do what anyone would have done. Everybody forward, Hanley forward. And I have to say it, mistake by Bielkowski should have taken the ball, Hanley, yellow yeah, yeah. card, stood on the free kick, yeah. everything. In it goes. And once it went in, there was just this kind of laughable sense of that that is the most Ipswich thing in the yeah. whole world. Of all the humiliating, stupid things, you know, losing 5-1 at home, it, all the things, to, to do that, to be yeah. winning on 89 minutes. and then. But, Jack, in the stadium, we didn't know what our manager had done <laughs> On of the course. goal. So we didn't even know that subplot. Yeah. And maybe maybe the manager got a bit of karma yeah. for his behaviour for that goal going in. And you believe in that sort of thing. And of course, Tim Close scored that goal. And I then released posters um, <laughs> from that goal. But got, by the way... You got hammered by your Twitch fans. But, How much money did you make out of that? Well, though? this is the thing. They are the best-selling piece of merch I've ever done. And I think the free advertising from Ipswich fans and Norwich fans, who also criticised them, played into my hands. But it was it was... I almost felt like that result was more enjoyable than a win because we'd given you it and just taken it away. And it was almost <laughs> like that evilness that, that, uh, that Did you see my so post-match? Pleasure. I couldn't speak for the first yeah, minute. You, you I were pretty was broken, weren't you? Gutted, yeah. absolutely gutted. And then, of course, they, they held us in the ground because the police didn't have a clue. They hadn't planned for that, no. you know, for chaos yeah, yeah. at the end of the game. And, of course, we're all penned in and all the Norwich fans are coming by, yeah. you know, giving it all that. It, it, and you're just like, get me out of here. Yeah. Make the video, home, forget but about it. I kind this. of, I kind of, the other takeaway from that game was is the distinct lack of quality from both sides. Um, but I think both keepers didn't have the best of games and they were kind of the players we were relying on. The finishing was poor. I remember um, Gar- I thought we were really, having a, a, a pretty poor game. I thought we were good in the first half because there'd been an international break and we wondered whether um, McCarthy would go three at the back and... We were surprised with the first half. You looked a bit nervous. And then, yeah. if I can be incredibly impolite, it just looked like, 
give it to Madison in the second yeah. half, literally. And that I, was our season. <laughs> and it was, yeah. and of course, um, I was amazed how much he'd improved from the first. Mm. The first game, I didn't know much about him, and then in that game, I was. I remember Bellamy doing the same thing. Yeah. Like, okay, you're good, but when a player has that kind of confidence, it was like. You know, you know, on FIFA when they when they make a player way better and yeah, they can yeah. just move yeah. faster than everyone, I was like, it was that that guy's good. Almost yeah. cockiness, confidence. Wasn't it's it? Same as Bellamy though. Yeah, he's yeah. 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 like, look, I'm I'm better than anyone on yeah. this pitch, and I thought he was I thought he was superb in the second. Um, okay, so that's last season. That's forgotten now. It's all about this <laughs> year. Um, and of course, you mentioned there the McCarthy um, comments. We'll we'll say still to, getting to the asked crowd. about it, Jack. Um, was that the decline? I, I know he already, he wasn't kind of in favour at that point, but was that the point when it was kind of like, well, this is the end for, for Mick now? Um, a lot of people would even go back to Lincoln on TV one year previously losing in the FA Cup okay. and Terry Butcher on the telly picked the bones out of that. Right. Mick McCarthy is what he said. What, um, did, what, did Mick, sorry, what did Mick say on that occasion? Um, it wasn't what he said. It was that he'd gone... Over and over again in cup games, playing a weak team, and mm. we thought, right, Mick, you're on TV now. <laughs> yeah. don't, don't do this. The whole country's watching Lincoln uh, non league. Yeah. So a lot of people thought that was it. But then there was one year of his contract left, and Evans gave him money for Waghorn, Garner, Hughes, and they had Selena. And of course, we had that very silly start where we won five games yes. on the trot. And you kind of thought, oh, hang on, could he, could he renew? And then. There was the Burst and Selena incident at Burton yeah. where um, the crowd were chanting for him to come on. Mick brought him on and he scored the winner. Yeah. And then Mick has a pop at the crowd, yeah, you know, yeah. saying, oh, I didn't bring him on. In fact, I'm more likely to not bring him on. And you're like... You're not helping yourself. You're not helping... Yeah, you're not helping yourself here. And then the form got poorer and poorer. And a lot of people watched that on Sky and thought, what... I mean, I've done that. I remember being at Walsall once and the guy three seats down was having a go at Richard Naylor the whole game. 94th minute, Richard Naylor scores the winner. I didn't celebrate the goal. I turned round and, you know, he went, yeah, yeah. why are you cheering, mate, you hypocrite? So I've done exactly what Mick did, got a bit amped up. But you can't, you can't tell your fans to F off on yeah. TV. You cannot. And I have to say, the way he spun it from then on, you know, was Alistair Campbell kind of yeah. levels of, Spin so to a lot of people they agree with you. That was yeah, that and, was it. And whatever you think of Mick, he he played a, a big part in sort of Ipswich's recent history. Took you to the playoffs. He done well on a, on a shoestring budget, and he's now gone. Paul Hurst comes in, a man who done fantastic things at Shrewsbury. I didn't quite Ben Godfrey as well. Ben Godfrey, yeah. Carlton Morris. I didn't quite realise the impact he'd had. I, I was reading a, a League One season. Um, preview and when Saturday comes and they interviewed a fan from each League One club and they said who was your kind of best team last season mm. they all said Shrewsbury really? they all okay. said the, the work Hurst done there on a, on a tight budget was fantastic so Hurst comes in and, and I've, I've written down your some of your transfers here you let go of Waghorn Webster Garner McGoldrick brought in a, a fairly sizeable sum and, and paid them out in you know Caden Jackson Emerson Harris um, Ellis Harrison Gwyn Edwards where are you as a club at the moment? I mean, that was surprising to everybody because we thought, right, one of Bielkowski or Waghorn's going to get sold and yeah. we'll sign three players. Yeah. And all of a sudden, it was like, no, we're going to completely, you know, move on from McCarthy. And a lot of people were kind of a bit a bit annoyed about that because everyone wanted to really see what would those players be like under yeah. a different manager, but we're never going to get to see yeah. that. So, um I think everyone was a bit surprised, but pleased. And obviously, the criticism is now you you've taken out all the experienced players. There's only Nudson, Skews, mm. Chambers, and Bielkowski left. And I think there was nine out of eleven were Hurst. Right. I could be wrong about no. It must be no because Fervent them played. But you, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, it's yeah. been a massive a massive turnaround. And I think that's just surprised everyone. And that's maybe where it's gone a bit wrong. The first five and, and the likes of Wycorn, who was so impressive last season, and Garner, who I'm pretty sure Hurst said on transfer deadline day in his press conference that he's 95 percent sure he's staying, <laughs> yeah, right. and then turn around and go. Are you I'll slightly to Wigan. Yeah. disappointed in them players for not giving it more of a chance? I mean, Wycorn <sighs> is unlikely to be playing week in week out for Derby. I know it's money in the bank mm. for you guys, and you had a good season out of him, fantastic. But as you say, it, it would have 
that would have been great for Ipswich fans to see. Well, could these players be you know reignited under a new manager? Uh, I don't know because it because it hasn't happened. Um, from Wag, for for the Waghorn point of view, he came. He was one of those guys. I don't know what the equivalent is at Norwich. Who's always smiling, mm. always beloved, runs. So when Waghorn gets a big pay rise and a move to Derby, you say thank you, okay. thank you, goodbye. Garner obviously is the the nasty, horrible player who you love to have on your team, but yeah. not against. I'm a bit surprised that that many went because the first one to go was Webster to yes. to Bristol City. And it's quite big money as well. Yeah, that's going to go up to eight million if um, he scores 25 goals and gets an England cap right, or whatever. Okay. So it's staying at four million. Though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with Lee Johnson. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I don't know, Jack. Um, it. I'll, I'll answer and not answer. It is what it is. They've mm. all gone, and it's the it's the new thing. What I'll say is, we were talking about you know just when we were setting up Murphy and Madison and this Norwich model that's been great, hasn't it? For great. turning well, yeah. for turning players yeah. over and turning a profit and borrowing Maitland Niles and borrowing Gleeson and Carter Vickers and whatever. Yeah, that's very short term. But I like the idea of look the upside of all of those players is. If any of them turns out like Murphy yeah. or Madison, you make a load more if you can sell to the Premier League. And it only takes one of them players as well. Yeah, and you can recycle all yeah. again. So I think Evans has looked at maybe a bit at Norwich and a bit at uh, Brentford yeah. and you know Preston, Alex Neal, where you, you can sell Hugel for nine million, mm. whereas okay, back goes Stephen Gleeson and you know you make Tom Lawrence better and off he goes to Derby for yeah. seven million and Leicester cash in. And okay, Tom Lawrence was great, but. But I suppose the risk, at, at least when you had Tom Lawrence, you had that genuine, you know, mind foot process that you could genuinely get in the playoffs and go up, and and you can under this system. But it's kind of like, well, if you don't go up, you've then just got to rebuild again. We, we've got the situation at the moment. We, we we built a decent squad. Murphy, Madison, they've gone. We replaced them with Hernandez. He's having a great start to the season. Well, he'll probably be gone at the end. So it's kind of like you're constantly having to find. It's difficult, isn't it? And are you are you playing football to? make your finance books look good or are you playing football with a genuine urge to go up and it's kind of like who are you supporting are you supporting on the pitch or are you su- supporting the but sustainability just, of the club you just completely nailed the entire dilemma of Marcus Evans at Ipswich which which way is the chicken or the egg which way round is it obviously Marcus Evans what everyone says is a very clever man and he understands that he will make this much money mm. in the Premier League and this much so he must be doing it to get to the Premier League and I think 14-15 when we lost to you in the playoffs he thought right all I need is this Yorkshireman on the touchline he'll get me there yeah. you know but you know it's a bit it's a bit different and I think he's I think he's looked at it and said no lower division younger guys spend a bit of money on them longer contracts mm. and like you say it only takes and what did Murphy go to Cardiff for? Like 12 million I think you yeah. sell to you sell to a so I mean, back on to Derby, you get yeah. five million. You sell to a Premier League team, yeah. and that's twelve million. But it, we, we, there's been a fun, kind of a fascinating kind of argument at the moment with Norwich City fans. Are we supporting what we're seeing on the pitch? Or are we supporting the club? In terms of Farker's reign so far, it's been phenomenal in terms of making money and making because you know we 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 got to the Premier League, we were living the dream, and then you drop down, you're still paying wages, and you suddenly got this massive financial gap to fill. Well, we've filled that and we're fine, but it's like well, that's been hugely successful. Yet we've watched a season of turgid, turgid football and, and finished fourteenth. Mm. What are you supporting? What is successful? And you've got a similar kind of thing here. Is a successful season developing a player and bringing in seven million that you paid a million for, or is it breaking the bank a little bit, risking it, and finishing in the playoffs? Like, it's, what is the aim? And I think that's got to be some kind of progress, hasn't it? And I mean, you're you're a smart guy, but there are people who, and I think you said it on your podcast with the Scottish journalist Stuart Hodge yeah, yeah that's a great show by the way um, where you said so, Dirty Dirt from Deerham or Dis or whatever he doesn't yeah. care what the balance yeah. book says he wants to see some goals he yeah. wants to see some great players and he wants to see great football doesn't he doesn't care about any of that so I think you just need to see progress and I have to say it wouldn't have been hard you know progress from four months ago where You've got eight men behind the ball. You're going away and losing one nil every time, and the manager's telling the fans to f off on TV. Progress is look, get get the fun back, yeah. and you know see where we go from there. But obviously, people like Chris Sutton and Curtis Woodhouse are I was having it. a big having yeah. a, 
having a great pop. I just say Chris Sutton was a great player and a British transfer record, but he's he's just he's just a troll. And I remember him arguing on TV. Mm. Um, he knows what he's doing. Yeah, and there you go. He's triggered me. But yeah. he said, "Okay, name the St Johnston left back." I would say to Chris Sutton, "Come, come and watch some games." Mm. And you know, it's a very easy narrative yeah. to. I, I, I listened to that call, and if you haven't, I'd, I'd recommend it. it was a six oh six call mm. with an Ipswich fan phoning up, and he and, and Chris Sutton's argument was, well, Mick McCarthy took you to X place, and on the paper, it's he had a successful reign. Well, and I he also of, took us to our lowest finish in sixty years yes. the season before. But um, uh, Sutton's argument was, you know, you don't, you know, you don't know what you're wishing for here. You could now go down with Paul Hurst. And I kind of had sympathy with that Ipswich fan. Because Wasn't the best thing that ever happened to Norwich? The, the, this good decade that you've had was predicated on going down to the third tier, wasn't yeah, it? And, and I'm not saying that's a sensible thing to do. but yeah. And on the flip side, our highest finish in 20 years was under Chris Hewitt, and It was also some of the most boring football. And then, <laughs> right. And so it was kind of like, well, I get it. Looking from the outside in, McCarthy... Is it? I thought was a successful manager for Ipswich, but I'm not forking out 550 quid a season to watch McCarthy's football. On the flip side, you look at Norwich and go, well, why did you sack Chris Hewitt? He took you to 13th in, in the Premier League. People don't know if they're not watching it every week. Exactly, do they? and that's the thing, and, yeah. and that's what frustrates. And Jack, me. just really quickly, I stayed up in Yorkshire after Sheffield Wednesday and watched Rotherham, and I love Paul Warren. He's he's such a great yeah. guy. I watched Rotherham play the most defensive right. football. Set player, your guy Sean Raggett came yeah, up yeah. And, and oh against Millwall, yeah, scored yeah, the yeah. goal. And I came out, I did my match review. Um, check that out on YouTube. Um, I did my match review, and I was like, "Well, okay, great, fantastic for Rotherham." But if you're Norwich mm. and you've been in the Premier League, you, you know, you yeah, go and win. I, I was, I, I've actually written down on here somewhere. Um, you talk about Paul Warnett. Um, I kind of almost see him as um as a bit of a Hurst. I, I was reading Stuart Watson's interview with with um, Hurst earlier on in the season and he seems like a man who, who does, doesn't just care what happens on the pitch he's, he's trying to change mm. the philosophy of the club and kind of came from very humble beginnings didn't he and is that something for, for Ipswich fans to get behind as well you can genuinely see that Hurst is yeah. a good man and, Absolutely. and, he, and he's yeah. good with human beings that must be nice as well and I think there's a very joined up you can see what he's trying to do I went to Cardiff last year parked up team came through and, you know, people are very kind to me and they say, I know what I'm talking about. I looked at the team and I'm like, I, I don't understand. I right. do, I, wh- where's, the, where's the line of progress here? Yeah. What You're taking six players out. You know, this is, this is all very, I can stand on the side and tweak and it's all down to me. And uh, I'm talking about the previous yeah, manager yeah. again. Um, and I think with Hurst, you can see a more, right, this is, this is the plan for three, four years, hmm. hopefully. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I, I, I agree with what And saying. I guess that segues beautifully into what I wanted to talk about next is, is I kind of see Ipswich now with Hurst in a similar position that Norwich were in this time last year with Farker. Hmm. Um, admittedly, Ipswich's change isn't as big. We literally stripped out the whole of the club and went, right, we are starting again. We need to make X amount of money to survive. Can I quickly ask you a question about that? I watched you walking out of Millwall last year. Yes. And he completely reset everything and went a bit more cautious. Would you be further on now if you hadn't lost 4-0 to Millwall and he'd stuck with what he was trying to do? Possibly. Possibly. We, we had a similar thing um, with Alex Neal. We went to Newcastle and got pumped 6-3 and he suddenly changed his whole free-flowing football and went very defensive and that was mm. what took us down. So possibly, and, but that's the rigours of the championship, isn't it? Like You, yeah. you can get pumped 4-0, but... I kind of wanted to talk about it. I said in the podcast a couple of days ago, this is an Ipswich side that have sold their best players, replaced them with League Two players, bottom of the table, haven't won a game under Hurst. That's what you see on paper. Yeah. You're watching it week in, week out. Where where are you as a club at the moment? Are you a team that is in a relegation battle? Will you be there at the end of the season? Um, hopefully not, but possibly, yeah. yeah. Um, have you seen enough tangible kind of stuff on the pitch to say this is just a blip this is the beginning yes if it plays out to its potential yeah because we were talking again when we were setting up i we're very good at the moment at finding mitigating factors for Mm. everything at the moment the blackburn game okay it's the first game you're playing against blackburn who have just scored 95 points or whatever they know what they're doing fine the rotherham game we dominate 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 they score in the last minute and win one nil Mm. you know there's a lot of excuses but you can see good organization you can see um the team certainly play more 
Yeah, I don't want to get caught out with this because we're losing, yeah. but they certainly play better passing possession football. Guion Edwards has been good down the right hand side. Mm. There's a lot you can see that's good, but you can't you can't get 0.4 points per game for the first yeah. month and say it's good. We if we'd have won the Rotherham game, uh, we would uh, well we'd have uh, five points. That we lost in the last minute. We, we 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 kept the ball and what I said about Paul yeah. Warren, they sat back, got a free kick and mm. put it in. Um, there's a lot that looks good, but um, I think everyone's going to have a different tipping point yes. with it. You know, where th- th- there's people already, oh, this isn't good enough, rah, 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 you know, who are a little bit, perhaps being a bit irrational, but they might be right. We yeah. might get relegated, it, you know. It, yeah, it's interesting because... You have to be open to the possibility, don't you? Yeah, my kind of tipping point with Farker, I've been fully behind the project. And I'm still behind the project, but I'm now starting to, you know, I've, I've watched this football for, for 18 months now and haven't seen progress. That was my tipping point and, and at the weekend against Leeds we almost accepted we were second best there wasn't even an attempt to change the game I went into that game thinking Leeds are going to beat us I also expected us to at least put up a fight and change right. things when things were going wrong so that was my tipping point on the other hand there was Norwich fans who when we got pumped 4-0 at Millwall went well this isn't working wow. and, I kind of, and I kind of looked back and go well were they right Did mm. could they could they see certain things and you, and you said earlier on about well hopefully three four years down the line if you scrape survival this season, maybe the same next season, do you then say, well, this project isn't working. We need to get someone else in. I mean, when... Crystal ball time, though, it? isn't yeah. it? Yeah, I mean, we could we could win. I hope we do, because I hope we beat you. But we could win our next three games, and we're mm. 12 or something, because it's early early days. Um, but you have to be open to the possibility that this, this will not work. Yeah. That either um, the players he signed won't get up to speed quickly enough, um, there's too much change too soon and all I'll say Jack is every year I watch the championship the teams that get relegated are awful yeah. and I think you have to go some to get relegated from the championship <laughs> don't you? surely yeah. surely even the teams like I've said it a few times and I think annoyed a lot of people this league is rubbish <laughs> it can be because <laughs> Millwall nearly got in the playoffs last year and I... yeah just by sticking the same team out yeah. every week high energy uh, big striker little striker yeah. bam I mean seventh it... Yeah, exactly. And you tell me where Middlesbrough will finish playing. They were, they're already dirging it out winning yeah. in the last minute, aren't they? So um, I would like to think that Paul Hurst is intelligent enough to have brought in good enough people and um, that we won't be down the bottom. But you know what it's like. You're down there long yeah. enough and then people start coming to, coming to play you. And yeah. You know what championships like? After 15 games, people start to revert to their league table position even if they're good yeah. you know and you think mm. so we shall we shall see but yeah it'd be nice to just a win a win they need to get that off their back yeah okay so that's the start of the season um rounded off um let's go into this sunday's game then it's um there is a lot on the line if we beat you that's then six games that win for you if you beat us and in the national break as well bottom of the league yeah i, I mean i think probably Probably the worst result is a draw here because yeah. if you win, it kickstarts your season. If we lose, it might be the, the the real kick up the ass we need to either get rid of someone or really, you know, see what's going on here. A draw is kind of like, well, you still haven't got your win, but it's not horrific. We're just continuing to plod along. How do you? For me, I feel like I know what's going to happen this Sunday, Go and on. I can't see past an Ipswich win. I, really, I, I genuinely think it, it's your time. I might be wrong. I Are you might... any good at corners? <laughs> mm, no, not really. Is that our only hope? <laughs> no, it's not your only hope. But I, 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 sorry, I wouldn't just go off on a tangent. We've conceded seven or eight goals from set plays. I mean, that's already. impressive. It's ridiculous. Um, what are we five games in? Yeah, eight set piece goals. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So yeah, but sorry. No, but so I mean, you, you can actually see Ipswich winning. I, I, I think I know it will happen. Wow. I mean, what's your, what's your thought? What's the thought from the Ipswich camp? Because Norwich fans are going into this very negatively, and that's probably the first time. I think last season we all thought, well, this is your best chance to beat us. This is our poorest squad in a decade. Well, maybe not a decade. You but still for, had for Madison, though, didn't you? We did. Um, but we didn't quite know what he'd be like in derbies. It was still a little bit of the unknown. This season, I think we all know what this team is about. And, mm. and I think, personally, if you get a goal, we'll crumble. Um, um, a lot of Ipswich fans think, and I don't think they're thinking with with their brains. I think they think it's a good story, 
Right, we got a new manager. Yeah. We're bottom of the league. We haven't beaten Norwich for 300 years. Yeah. And it would be a very nice wrapped up in a bow narrative. Yeah. Hurst first win, end the hoodoo, mm. come off the bottom of the league. It's, um, but you kind of need, need that little thing called evidence and <laughs> you know, yeah. empirical evidence to say why that will happen. Um, but do you, think, do you think you need that in a derby? Because sometimes, Maybe not, no. you know, I, I get annoyed when people are like, well, there's not enough passion from the manager, not enough passion from the players. I think a lot of it, a lot of derby games are won in the head. And well, and we've it, certainly lost a lot of derby games in there, you yeah. know, bottling, you know, the, the last two completely, we've mm. bottled both of them, haven't mm. we, when something's gone against us. So um, one thing I will say is we're only going to have three or four players who have ever played in a, in a local yeah. derby before. There's a lot of people who... They've never lost to Norwich. They haven't had Wes Houlihan ripping them apart yeah. for 10 years and yeah. Cameron Jerome and Paul Lambert. So, And I suppose, what do you make of that? Do you go into it, well, they're not experienced in a derby, it could you know, be well, they, well, they're not going to bottle because they're scared of Norwich. Because it's, because it's never happened to them. to them. Yeah, possibly, yeah. yeah so, go either, go either mm-hmm. way, couldn't it? But I suppose you guys are in the are in the same position now. The, yeah. You know, how many, how many players really who are there have, you know, won... All these games yeah, against Ipswich, so not many. And I suppose saying me saying oh, we're definitely going to lose weekend you, is is one argument. The other argument is something I raised on the podcast last week. Let's not forget Ipswich are bottom. You're mm-hmm. that a win? I think we've still got the better team on paper. We've still got you know Jordan Rose, Tim Closer, who are arguably Premier League players. Mm-hmm. We should be beating you. And if we don't, we have to look and take serious questions. Do you still think we're the favourites? Um, I agree with what you say about the gap, and I think fourteen fifteen. The gap we said this last time. The gap was massive. Yeah. You had way better, way better players than us last season. You and I keep bringing them up. You had Madison, mm. so you had one of the best players in the league yeah. to build your team around. So, um, but now also we, <laughs> Webster's gone, yeah. Waghorn's gone, Garner's gone. Although arguably we might be more. United as a team I'm sure someone will have asked because they yeah. always asked us who who would get in Norwich team yeah, who would get yeah. from the Ipswich team um, there's not that much in it um, I can't give the argument we finished above you in the table because all of those players have been sold yeah. so all the play- only Knudsen Bialkowski Chambers and Skews have finished above Norwich yeah. so I can't really give that as a mm. sensible argument because you'll just say you sold all the players yeah. um, so I don't know whether we've got a better team than you. I, I really don't. I really, and you probably don't know um, how some of your players are going to. Hernandez, no, McLean, Brundia, yeah. um, Puki, Rhodes. You don't. You don't know how they're going to perform. Yeah. Could all be great, and you finish high up. They could all could all be terrible. Definitely. Should we get into some Twitter questions? Um, Let's do it. We um, yeah, we basically put it out on both accounts. Ask us Twitter questions. We got tons. Always. Lots of people were just kind of. I felt like just it was a bit of a therapy session for some. They were kind of just going through their life stories and telling stories, and which is great. It does mean the questions are slightly convoluted, and we're going to have to filter through these slightly. So give us a chance. Have you got any up? Or- uh, this is the this is the Blue Monday side okay. of it. So if we take some from me, yeah. Um, John Boy twenty six. Who's had the better start to the season? I think you just look at the league table for that, can't you? Yeah, but there's only two points in it, isn't there? Yeah. Um, Who's had the tough? I think we've had a pretty tough start, to be fair. Leeds, um, West Brom. Um, yeah, we've had a few tough games in there. We've had Derby and Villa, but we've also had Rotherham and Blackburn. Yeah, I think you've had the worst start. But we were looking for improvement, and we haven't got that. So you could... I think we've both had pretty woeful starts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think, yeah. Um, Jack, have you changed mobile phone provider since Delia's most excellent advert? <laughs> Does that show that Delia's maybe not got as much money as some thought? Really? I'm, I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. She's loaded. Yeah. Ben, ben. Uh, no, I haven't, by the way. I'm with three and they're very good. <laughs> I need to ask you about your dongle thing you do your match reviews on. We'll do that. that now, that is EE. Oh, okay. But that wasn't influenced by Delia. <laughs> by Kevin Beck. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> do you think a win this Sunday will kickstart our season or do you believe there is something inherently wrong in what Hurst is doing tactically? Um, it's crystal ball time again. I think a win would kickstart our season. But... Both things can be true, can't mm. they? We might we might win and still get. And on the flip, and I think on the flip side to that, I I don't know. Ugh, look, of course I want to beat Ipswich. Yes, I do, but I'm not sure if a win would be best for Norwich in the long term. You, 
the, the term paper over the cracks, I think, is too it's a bit Arsenal fan used. TV, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it is. But it's kind of like, if we win this, how much, how much, you know, tangible improvement will we see long term? And it's kind of like, emotionally, it will it will help. And but this doesn't define what you're doing, does it? Beating I, Ipswich? No, and I, we should. I think we should be beating Ipswich personally. And I kind of think a win. I personally think it's game over for Daniel Farker. I, wow. I can't see a way back for him with the fans. That might help if we beat Ipswich. But then I, I, all I see is us beating you and reverting back to square one the following week. And it's kind of like he's then given another three months. What's your run like after you play us? Um, I think we've got a few decent away games. I think QPR and Reading, Reading are in there. So we should, basically we need a great September because our yeah. October is stinking. I think we've got Stoke <laughs> away, Borough away. We've got some tough games in there. So... It, it is the next few months for I think for both Norwich and Ipswich are, are going to be fascinating to follow. I really do. If although if Marcus Evans his previous um, sort of hires or anything to go by, there's an argument that even if Ipswich have a terrible season, the worst happens they're relegated. He, that no, the project is a three year, five year, right. and we've got a really good League One manager and a lot of good League One yeah. players. Um, I, I hope that's not the case, and I hope it might be what you need. You don't know, but yeah. We'll That's see. our title. Ben Bloom wants Ipswich to go down. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't click that. Which celebrity fan is better, Ed Sheeran or Hugh Jackman? I quite like Ed Sheeran, I must admit. He's not Wolverine, though, is he? Yeah, he's not. No, and Grunge. Hugh Jackman can sing really beautifully. I'm saying well, so Ed Sheeran, obviously, but. Yeah, but can Ed Sheeran act? Um, he's in Game of Thrones, isn't he? Yeah. But he's just kind of sitting playing yeah. his guitar. We call Are you that? a bit, I see you as a, as a man that doesn't like Ed Sheeran. Oh, no, I've, I've, I've met him a few times when he was coming up. He's a lovely chap. And I'm, yeah. You know, all the, his he, music, though. Do you like his music? Um, I respect his craft. <laughs> okay, so that's no. <laughs> no, he's really, no, that's no. no. The, the problem is I do, I do weddings and uh, have to play... Um, <laughs> Thinking out loud, and just when you think it's gone away, um, I found a love, yeah. and he's done perfect. So that'd be the first dance for a million years. Um, <laughs> this is Jack Phillips. Um, do you think no, where do you think Norwich will end up, and where do you think Ipswich will end up? What in, in the next for the for the season? I I think we'll finish thirteenth. There's a chance both in the table. bottom half. Oh, I think I think I think we'll, we definitely won't go down. Um, but I. I can't see us contending with the playoffs and what I've seen early doors unless there's a miracle. What what about you guys? Well, now we're now we're bottom, you say just don't get relegated. But if you you know what football fans are like, mm. if we get two points per game from the next six games, it's gonna be right, playoffs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know what it's like in the championship. If you're anywhere near, everyone's like, right, playoffs. Well it's it late was, run. It was that with us last season. We were we were playing some terrible football and seemingly drawing nil nil every week. Yeah, up until about February, we were still like in the playoffs. Well, or we won those first five games. That kept us playoffs until virtually Christmas, yeah. you know. So it's weird. You, you can kind of go so many games thinking you're underperforming and then you look at the table and you're like, well, actually, we're a point off the playoffs here. I think so, you can answer this in one word, Jack. This is Ollie Fingold. For Jack, would you take Mick McCarthy if Norwich <laughs> lost to ITFC on Saturday? No, but I've said it on record many a times. I love Mick McCarthy. <laughs> I bet I you do. I genuinely love Mick McCarthy. I bet you do. Hey. Mick. Uh, Andy G, is Sunday's game a relegation six-pointer? Well, on paper, yes. But five games in is the mitigating yeah, factor, but that, isn't it? Is it no suppose, one gets relegated I suppose, after I suppose, five games. No, no, of course. Is the, is the, to, to follow on to this question, are these the worst Ipswich and Norwich sides we've seen for a long while? Well, we don't know with the Ipswich um, side because it's five games old. Yeah. So it could turn, I keep edging my bets, it could turn out to be the worst Ipswich side we've seen in a while. If they finish lower than 16th, it will be yeah. factually, statistically. Um, well, you tell me about the, the Norwich side. Certainly the well, worst I, since Lambert, isn't it? Yes, on paper. Yeah. Um, but at times, at the, uh, <clears throat> the start of this season, we looked you know, blistering against Birmingham at times, even though we lost 4-3 against West Brom, we should have won, we missed a penalty, Cruel decided to chuck one in his own net, so at times we've looked electric. Would Remy Matthews have saved that? No comment. <laughs> no comment. Carry on. Uh, <laughs> I see what you've done there. Um, yeah, yeah, Norwich fans don't like me for my, um, for my thoughts on Tim Cruel, but we'll leave that there. Um, so yeah, at times we've looked really good, but I keep going back to this argument we looked really good against Leeds for 20 minutes, yet we didn't have a shot on target. Um, 
And similar similar is that to how, us. Is that how far we've fallen that we are now saying, well, at least we had a good quarter of a game. There you go. We need a, a full 90 minutes. We're yet to see that. Um, so, um, yeah, this this is probably the worst Norwich side we've seen for some time. Who do you think will be the standout players on Sunday? You can go first. Well, I think you're gonna well put your neutral hat on. Gwion Edwards, our right winger, has yeah, been he's been really great. Good. He's yeah, been really, yeah. really, really, really good. Who was good. he from? Peterborough. Peterborough. Okay. Yeah, um, he's been the the guy who's who sold like fifty eight players and signed about sixty two Peterborough it's every season. Yeah, though. Yeah. <laughs> they're always they're always they're get, doing well. Get good money though, don't they? Um, hopefully, Bielkowski will um, sort himself out. Um, but I don't know what's happening there because he would be our nailed on yeah. leader, and he's had a really. I love him. But yeah. You've seen him play a couple of yeah, blinders yeah. at Carrow Road as well, haven't you? Well, that was the that was the thing. I was reading through these Twitter questions, and someone said, "Who's had the worst start of the season, Bart or or Cruel?" And I was like, "Well, obviously Cruel." But speaking no, to you off camera, not, Bart's had a, sh- a no. A given start. given our expectations for Bart are that you know he he'll make two mistakes in a season, yeah. and you know he's flapping for a corner last game. Tom Lawrence shot through his hand game before that, and all these set play horrors don't get me wrong I, I'm not yeah, I'm not burying the guy but hopefully he reverts back to type but wasn't he linked with Fulham for a while a uh, move. It, I think I think what happened I can't say too much I think what happened are you was, ITK on the whole thing or? yeah <laughs> okay. I, I think yeah. there was one contract that was offered and then another offer was made that may not have been to the level of the first okay. one and then I think his agent said well Okay, we we'll show you what we can get elsewhere, oh, I see. and then I think yeah, yeah. either somewhere in between or the first okay. offer was put. Back but th- in. that on paper still seems like fantastic business to keep hold of him. If he plays like he's done yeah. the past three seasons, yes. If he plays the <laughs> he plays, he's just not playing well. I, and I, I hope I hope he has a great game, you know, and yeah. um, he's back to his best. But certainly those two and. Um, yeah, hopefully. Uh, Teo Eden's a good player. We've got him on loan from yeah. Fulham. Busy little busy little midfield. What about for Norwich? I think, you know what, I'm, I'm not looking forward to this to this game, but as always, you, you do start to go over scenarios in your head and just think... Do they all involve Jordan Rhodes? I was thinking to say, yeah. And his butt in the 90th minute or something. Yeah, <laughs> like you kind of go over in your head these scenarios and thinking, what if? What if mm. that happens? And Jordan Rhodes has actually really surprised me. He, he looks the real deal. Um, he... My worry was he's, he wasn't going to be fit because he's hardly played football for two seasons. He looks, he runs like a T Rex. I've noticed. Um, Interesting physical fit. specimen, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Um, and it, and he's he's a finisher. Although he missed a penalty, I would love it, and Norwich fans would certainly love it because there's already a chant. Jordan Rhodes is one of us. He hates Ipswich. Mm-hmm. Going around the terraces after his few early goals this season, I'd love for him to pop up with a goal and. It's that unknown goal. again. Everyone says if you get the Jordan Rhodes from Blackburn or Huddersfield, yeah. Kaching, yeah. you get the Jordan Rhodes from Sheffield Wednesday. I we played Sheffield Wednesday. I don't know spring sometime. Mm. We got subbed at half time. He was rubbish. Yeah, and but, I think I think he'd scored something like five goals in two seasons, and four of them came against Norwich when he was at Sheffield Wednesday. <laughs> Did so they really? It was kind of like I wish we could do. It. He we, has scored a lot of goals against Ipswich as well. Has he? Yeah. It, um, it would just be so beautiful for the narrative. I think. Um, not for me but yeah. I'm sure I'm sure you so sure yeah I think Jordan Rhodes has the potential Arnel Hernandez I'm sure yeah I like the look of him yeah. he's excellent although he's fallen off a little bit the last couple of games so I wonder was that just you know start of the season goodness and then of course you've got the sort of household names Grant Hanley Tim Close who are on that day can be really solid championship defenders so the other one as well which is interesting is Todd Cantwell um, has he started at all? no he hasn't but I just he has been really big in this game up on Instagram saying mm. like if I score you know I'm knee sliding in front of the home fans he's got on the pitch first Todd <laughs> he's kind of he's giving a, it the Oliveira little, has he? no he's a little bit behind Madison but he's got that cockiness about him he's exceeded throughout all of his youth ranks and you just think if he gets on the pitch for and 10 is he minutes a number 10 as well yeah is he? he's got the potential to become a hero this is this is stage is it yeah, so I don't think he'll play, but if he does, watch out for him. Yeah, but you, but you think he might come on as a late sub? Probably not, but I kind no. of want him to. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Least, I think you've answered this already, Jack. Would you both take nil-nil now? I don't think either of us would, would we? What, no, what, no use what, to anybody, yeah, is what's it? What's the follow-up to the question? Uh, call the game off and spend a day doing something better with your time. No, probably. No. <laughs> probably. Come on, it could be the best day ever. Yeah, it, yeah, but it could also be the worst. I no, guess. no, that was in that was eighty-nine minutes chambers. I suppose and you 95 felt, minutes closer. Yeah, you, 
the thing with Norwich fans, and we we also spoke about this on the last podcast, is it's like this kind of unbeaten in ten years against Ips, which is is although it's fantastic and it, we can boast about it, it is still that cloud, yeah, r- sort of looming over our heads, and we have so much to lose. You mm. don't really have much to lose. You're bottom of the table. You can't go any further <laughs> down. You haven't beaten us for ten years. Who cares if it goes another six months? We, on the other hand, this could be the end of our manager. We could slip into the relegation zone. We could lose a 10-year unbeaten run. It could be pretty much season over in terms of not having the ability to get into the playoffs by the sixth game. We've got a lot to lose. And the thought of losing this weekend makes me feel slightly ill. But except for that, it's all fine. So, yeah, I would take the nil-nil probably. Wow. And and maybe go along Yarmouth Seafront and eat Um, chips. So, I wanted to get one from... There was one from Harry who does our preview shows that was as usual by him hi can you ask jack if looking back the farewell ceremony for wes houlihan last april was in fact a kind of last waltz a wider acknowledgement that the era of lambert's premier league team was now a thing of the past it seemed like that looking in from the outside yeah, yeah it was it was kind of the last piece martin is martin still, still here around has been frozen out by daniel farker i russell martin isn't good enough but he is also a legend, a mm. lovely guy, and I think an important part to have around the club. But Wes Houlihan was still that piece of unbelievable quality from them mm. Lambert days. You know, we've recently seen Holty retire. That's another bit gone. Yeah, it was. And it was it was sad to see a player go that maybe still had life in him. But it's kind of like he went out on a high. At least there wasn't a season where he was utterly dreadful and kind of it, that taints your opinion on him slightly. But yeah, it was the end of an era. And this is the start of a new era. And I think it's, you know, we can we can make comparisons with Ipswich, but it's very dangerous to look in the past. Mm. You need to look forward. We have committed to a project. We need to stick to it. And Houdan's gone. He's done. Lambert's done. Loads of people have been saying, well, would you take Lambert back? No, that's done. It, it would never be as good. Um, let's move on and see what we can do. But yeah, it, it was... And when you, look, when you look back at that, I think this is the hope all Ipswich fans have got because Lambert... Colchester, uh, Holt, Shrewsbury, yes. yeah, yeah. Houlihan, Blackpool, yeah, I was, all picked up and you're halfway up the Premier League. I was saying, you know? I'd, I'd done a video in pre-season when you first got Hurst and were starting to sign the likes of Jackson and Harrison. This is very similar to what Lambert done. So 2009. Yeah, yeah. similar era. Yeah. Players, hungry players who have shown a bit of, you know, you're not just signing non-league players who've never done it. They have shown a bit of talent you know they've got the core skills they're not the finished product but you've got a manager there who's done it with with a, a team already it, it seemed like the perfect fit and I thought you know we've got to be careful here because otherwise Ipswich are going to be up there and we're not and I said that and I got a stick for it but I still believe that you guys will do well under Hurst that's the best case yeah scenario it, on it? the flip side you might have signed a ton of average players and slip further down the league on a shoestring budget. I don't know, but I think it often... And you look at Millwall. Their record signing last week was a million pounds. They've survived incredibly well in the Championship. They've had three promotions. They've been to Wembley twice. It doesn't take massive investment. It takes a, a, a core of the squad that sticks around, a manager who the fans buy into. And an idea that you stick to. And for, a philosophy, yeah. yeah. And, and um, yeah, and... Uh, can yeah. I can I do one more for you, Jack? I've, I've, um, as many as many. As we interested can, yeah. in a balanced view on why Norwich tend to get more on sales than Ipswich. Butcher versus Watson is a good historical example. Um, but just over the summer, how did Norwich steal twelve million for uh, a barely above average player? I assume he's talking about Murphy, who played right. just thirty seven. And we were talking about this in our podcast. Actually, Norwich always get you know when yeah. you think even Chris Sutton that was a British transfer yes. record, yeah. and he's mentioned Dave Watson there. Um, and we talk about Madison, uh, Murphy, and Ipswich don't tend to, you know, yeah. Mings was 8 million and Wickham was 8 million. But I think a man, I mean, I can only talk about this in kind of my time of following Norwich City, but under McNally, we've historically got good money. I mean, you look back, we've got 8 million for Lewis Graben, um, you know, some other, some other decent signings. But whatever you thought of McNally, he was a good businessman and saved us from financial crisis and took us to the Premier League. And he was a very good businessman, a, a good CEO. Um, we've now got Stuart Weber, a sporting director, who admittedly has more involvement in terms of what goes on on the pitch, but is he's going to the top of the game, Stuart Weber? You know, it might not translate to happenings on the pitch, but he has made a lot of money for Pink Norwich City. Room. 
pink dressing room. I'm sure we'll come on to that. Um, he is a man who is who does things. He's, he's such attention to detail. Um, and let's talk about the Madison one for 25 million. He was saying, "Well, we don't." Did he get picked for England? Did he? Did he get in the squad? No, he will be soon. Though. No, definitely. Um, Weber was saying we don't have to sell any players. The actual truth was we were in financial crisis. We had to sell Madison, but him, by him saying we don't have to sell, just forced the price up. Mm. We ended up getting 25 million. I think he was probably worth more actually than that. You look at Grealish being tapped with a 40 million pound move. Madison's double very similar those Grealish. two. Yeah, okay, um, I get the comparison. Murphy, yeah. um, we we can combined got 25 million for the two Murphys, That's two great, players who. Is. Or a top end championship player, bottom half Premier League. But player. when you sell to Premier League, yeah, that's I, what they pay, isn't it? We, I, I think, whatever you think of Daniel Farker, we have got a very good sporting director in Stuart okay. Weber, and he's the man that demands the prices, and he's just a bloody good businessman. And I think that's that's all it is. There's no special remedy of bringing players through. It's like we show showcase our talent on the pitch. Madison had a fantastic season. Murphy was good at times probably got a fantastic highlights reel um and then we've got a good businessman who can exploit other teams for money i think that's all it is I'm but just... at the same time you guys four million for an injury prone webster five million for a waghorn that's not bad business yeah you just feel a little bit jealous when you see hugel going for nine million and you think what it could be you know if you yeah. keep them a you keep them that you see a somber longer i know a somber longer is guaranteed goals and but it strikes me now, you agree with this, if you score 15 goals in a championship three seasons in a row, you're worth 10 million. Oh, plus, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. which is it's insane. Yeah. You know, What would David Johnson and Marcus Stewart have been worth? They got, like, Doug Johnson got 30 twice for us but in the I, 90s. I think there's, it's very dangerous comparing things because if you look from the outside into Norwich, you go 25 million for Madison is ridiculously good business. But we're looking at it. What have we lost? Well, if Grealish is worth 40, how on earth have we only got 25 million for a player that is definitely better? So it's kind of like 25 million is fantastic business, but it could have been more. Yeah. I think it's kind of like you've, you've just got to sometimes be grateful for what you get. And I think you do need to accept as an Ipswich fan, Norwich have been in the Premier League three, three years yes. recently. They have better players and they have had better players the past few years. They're going to be worth more. But that gap is closing now and I think we've, we've do you know what I would have said it was if we hadn't have sold off all those guys and you lost Madison I would have said right it's we're, yeah. we're close now yeah, but yeah. I can't say that now because it's don't... very if there is a gap it's very small right so we're now taking questions from the TNC account so I assume most of these people will be um Less sensible. Will be Norwich. <laughs> Sorry, will be Norwich fans. Don't don't hate me. Um, although the first one is from an Ipswich fan, Harry Butcher. Um, loves darts. Darren Webster's my favourite player. Oh, who, by saying... the way, has blocked me. Darren Webster's blocked me. Why? That's a bit harsh. And your friend, by the way, has blocked me. I, I'll have a word with him. About I'm just going to say, what's his name again? <laughs> Richard. He works on the podcast. Richard made a lovely trailer. I thought I'm going to go and give this guy some credit. Went on there. He's blocked me. I. I can't speak to that, Jack. I will, I will have a word with him. Harsh. Anyway, Harry Butcher hasn't blocked me. And he asks, um, Ben, first of all, would you like to see Dozel slash Bishop involved on Sunday? Um, no, I'd like <laughs> to see them both on the bench. I, okay. They haven't played any football, either of them. And I think Eden Chalabar. I'd like to see Emir Hughes, but I don't think we're going to, unfortunately. Mm. I think it's going to come a bit too early for him. But no, I think it will be... Two of Chalabar, Skews and Eden in the okay. centre mid. And for me, he asks, how long are you willing to give Daniel Farker before you want him gone? I suppose it's a tough one, this, because I tweeted out a stat the other week. I think it was something like we've won four in 21 games. Really? Of course, that... Well, going over last... Yeah, going wow. over last season as well. And some people were saying, well, that's not a stat. We're taking stats from season to season. When I'm thinking, well... Yes, Farker had now got his own squad and can't really be compared to last season. But it's still him managing, though, isn't it? Yeah, it was still him managing. So it's kind of like, well, I've given him twenty-one games, and, and two more four. is half a season, Jack. Yeah. So for me, my patience is very thin. Um, for others, they will be willing to give him more time. But for me, I haven't seen improvement. If we were losing games, but I've seen improvement on the pitch, I'm fine with that. I haven't seen that. For me, Farker, there's you not just put that else. really well. Can I just really quickly interject? Um, you just said if I was we're losing games and I was seeing improvement on the pitch I think that's where most Ipswich fans stand at the moment yes. they're seeing improvement on the pitch but we're but it's kind of like really. as well say you're 15 games in and you're not bottom but I don't know you picked up a few wins and you're seeing improvement on the pitch but it's not translating to results there's only so long you can yeah. go well 
we're playing nice football. You start to sound you an idiot. Yeah, you don't exactly, stay yeah. up playing nice football, do you? Or you, you do, but you need the points need to results. show for so it. It's, don't you? it's yeah. that million dollar question. How long do you give something? And we said it on the pod last time, draws aren't worth that much in the championship. No. You need those those three pointers. I think, I'm sure you tell me when you went up under Lambert, but we when we finished with Burley in the playoffs, you still lose 18, yeah. 20, 22 games in a season, don't you? Yeah. Lose a lot of games and still finish in the Definitely. top. I think it's all about momentum, isn't it? For mm. me, it's like to the perfect formula in the championship. You win your home games, you draw your away games, and then you have your odd slip up here and there. But it's kind of like you need to keep that formulaic And system. those weeks where you get two home games, yes. win both of them. Yeah, yeah. And, that, and that can take you from 14th to 6th, can't it? It's mad. Um, oh, I hear you. Lee Potter, I knew that something like this was going to come up. Um, oh, Lee. Ipswich fan talking about history. I think he was replying to someone. There's a first. Uh, I think I speak for all fans that are, uh, that are win at Wembley, beating you lot in the semi, along with over nine years of dominance in derby games, is enough for me. But you can drag up the stats from 1952. But all that matters is the here and now. I mean, that's not really a question. That's more of a statement. But yeah. you, we you talked about it last season, didn't we? Who's the bigger club? I You've think done that video. You, Fantastic you video. nailed it, though. They're both mid-sized clubs, one with an incredible fan base and one with an incredible history, yeah. which both of which, Norwich's fan base is kind of over and above their, their status. They yes. get more people than... Uh, we we added it up, didn't yeah. it? Like Ipswich had averaged 26 out of 92 and Norwich were 27 for 29. So it was really yeah. close. And Ipswich's history, if you look at it, what, what other club that draws under 20,000 fans? Hmm. You still go to Forest and there's 30,000. Yeah. Leeds... Even more Villa, even more, you know. But for me, obviously, in my lifetime, Norwich are the bigger club. But I've got a sample size of twenty years, so I can't really say. Look, the arguments: we will never win. Basically, you will, you never, will never win. win. But for this entire season, we had a superior league finish. Mm, indeed, uh, Oliver Barnard. He <laughs> asks for the Blue Monday. Um, ben, would you take back Mick McCarthy no. following Paul Hurst's awful start to the season? It's very easy from the outside to think that that's a sensible question, but yeah. it was impossible, absolutely impossible. And the thing people forget as well is that when McCarthy met Evans, they didn't even discuss offering him a new contract. They both came, mm. they both turned up to the date knowing that they were going to split up. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's just not a question. It's not a thing. Mm. You know, he was going to go. It was done. And you explained already these Things rolling back, 18 months. And yes, I appreciate brilliant to get us in the playoffs, yeah. but no, it's just... And it's interesting, we've seen McCarthy take up a media role rather than another management role. Is that him not being able to get another club? Would you, do you think No, that's him management? positioning himself um, to get another job when, when you one think he around. wants... You just oh, think... he'd, he'd come back in straight away if Sheffield Wednesday... Really? But the thing is, and this would be interesting, I don't want to talk about him too much because you know, we're trying to trying to move on from him. Mm. I think he still feels that he's worthy of a championship job with a chance of getting to the Premier League, okay. like Derby or yeah. something like that. And I think he might get a bit of a rude awakening really? that people are not going to be... People hire Daniel Fark now and yeah. Paul Hurst yeah. and Frank Lampard and uh, who's the Brentford guy? Dean Smith. Yeah. Josh Lukai, you know. Okay, there's Warnock. There's That's true. So, do you, why do you think that shift has been made then from from you McCarthy's from? But on the flip side, you you see the likes of Warnock still doing fantastic things. And yeah, there's still a lot of Norwich. Do you fans not think going. he's a bit of an outlier though? He's, he's, he's the only one I can think of who's a really old school manager who's still successful in champ. I just think our sports science seems to have gone from pretty much zero to mm. you know very full explanations of why. Emir Hughes is only going to play 45 minutes yeah. next week whereas oh he's on he's on the grass don't ask me I'm I'm not a physio yeah. you know I think though although clubs are cl- clearly making that switch quickly it's going to take a long time for for, for British football I agree fans with to that, still yeah. get on board there's still tons of Norwich fans going well you know you know we, we literally make five passes it's like well boot it long stop t-. <laughs> it's like well yes I get it if it's not working but you do also have to kind of but the other thing Jack is it, specifically about the championship the model is Brentford Preston if you don't have parachute money the model is Brentford Preston that type of thing you have to 
get good players in, sell them to teams that do have because the gap between money is yeah. is massive, you know. Um, and I just think that people like McCarthy and Warnock, they need they need money yeah. and they need to tweak in games. But and, do you, like for me, that's what Norwich are doing, and Norwich are doing very well if we're basing it on that. But I don't want to become that club that builds up a player and flogs them off. And but then how finish. can you how can you compete with um, people signing forwards for? We, we million. just need some, you know, the Villa Villa's owners to come in and, and flush us out. <laughs> it's the only option. There you uh, go. But, but no, in all seriousness, are both of our clubs simply aiming to keep the books turning over? Is it more of a business now? I hope they? not. I hope not. And I think the Millwall thing and the Brentford thing gives people but hope. But at the end of the day, they haven't gone up. No, they, they, that that point will always win that yeah. argument. So it's yeah. kind of like, well, it doesn't work. Yeah. And until, so, yeah. but Huddersfield. Did go up. And a lot would say that the Norwich model, literally Weber was at Huddersfield, yeah. so was influenced heavily by, by that. But are Huddersfield an outlier? Who else has done it? Yeah. Only them. And they're struggling. I think they'll come back down this season. They'll come down time. loaded though, won't they? Yeah, it's true. It's true. But it'll be interesting to see whether they can do it again. Um, Richard, who has blocked me, Richard Woodward, but it kind of upsets me this a little bit. Um, he simply said, how do we stop Hernandez? Scott replied to him, um, just simply mark him out of the game like Leeds did. Bloke didn't have a scrap. Yeah, how? Um, Richard then replies, does he swap wings? I'd fancy one of our fullbacks against him. Maybe not. Um, for me, all Leeds done, they just pressed the ball so quickly and it meant that our midfielders couldn't get the so ball we never to got Hernandez. Any good position so it was kind of like, you cut the supply to Hernandez rather than cut Hernandez. When Hernandez got the ball, he looked dangerous and I think whenever... He gets the ball. He'll look dangerous. But if you cut the supply, we will press, we but it will fade. Watch for it at sixty, sixty-five minutes. Okay, has done in every game. I've I, talking about Leeds. I've never seen a, a Championship team press as well as, as they've done. I think they can last out. I know they've got this football <sighs> god. Yeah. But it's kind of like they played Swansea on the Tuesday um, and pretty much kept the same. They looked not as, signed that many players either, has he? There was one. Different. There was one change from the team we played at the end of last season, which is fascinating. It shows the amount of impact the manager could but have. But if he's as good as uh, Simeone, Guardiola, and uh, Pochettino say he is, then mm. well, they've just got them. It's like when Benitez was at Newcastle. It's like, what are you doing in the Championship? Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Phil Bohr asks, um, "Do Norwich pose much of a set from set pieces?" I think we've, we've said spoken that. About that. And what does Jack think of Jordan Rhodes? And I'm going to flip this. What do you make of Jordan Rose now? Is he a traitor? Is he a player that you kind um, of feel a bit? How can you how can you blame him? Because Roy Keane essentially got shot of him, and if you speak to our well, preview guy, yeah, that's a very kind of that's yeah, that's a, a well informed opinion, isn't it? To take put the emotion back into it. He was an Ipswich boy. Now he's a Norwich lad. Like, but he's how old is he? Uh, past twenty. So he's late twenties, and he's got this tag of. He's great in the Championship, and but not in the in the Premier League. Well, yeah. those like Robert Earnshaw used yeah, yeah, to be. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, so if I'm him, I want to go somewhere. A that I'm going to get paid, and B that I'm going to have a chance. You got to put your career first. Yeah. Sometimes, and I think you speak you, you speak to players, don't you? you? Speak to players. They they don't see it how we do. Yeah. Well, they're you not know, as emotionally connected, are they? No, they. They want to win. Yeah. They're real competitive guys. They want to get paid. You yeah. know, he had to choose somewhere that was going to match that Sheffield Wednesday wage. And I think you said on the pod, on your pod at the time, oh, Angus Gunn goes, you get a kickback from. Or yeah, there, there, was, was, there was some yeah. money that came in, from and you were like, Angus, well, yeah. okay, if Rhodes makes two million a year, sign him for a year. Yeah. And you know. Um, no, I don't think he's a trade. It's an interesting point, that, though, in terms of players. Do they have the same connection to a club? I was kind of thinking about this the other day. If I was, if I pulled on the Norwich shirt against Ipswich, of course I'm going to be dead up for it. Mm. But then I was like, if I was a footballer and I'm a Norwich fan, I go and play for Sheffield United, I don't care if I'm playing Sheffield no. Wednesday. The f- fans might be a bit louder, but for me, it's just another it, 11 players. I think there's, there's a way, if he scores a really muggy goal... It, look, if he bangs one in the top corner from 30 yards... He can celebrate how he wants. If he scores a really muggy goal and perhaps cups his ear to the north stand or whatever, then he'll be considered a persona non grata. But yeah. I, d- I don't have an issue with it. the proof's in the pudding. If he's good enough, he'll score again. He'll score against us then, won't he? Mm. You know. And yeah, be interesting to see what he does if he does score. Though. Um, now this is the thread, Ben. That basically um, 
the chat. Put your phone I on don't, North I don't know morning, what his name it? is, but <laughs> Matt. Oh, Mullet, yeah. Mullet. Yeah. Uh, we're speaking with Matt, and Matt's a lovely guy. Um, they basically... They, Mullet's they, very clever. He's very. He's, he? not, he's not a ranty Twitter troll. And, and Matt is very intelligent as well. So this is they basically written a novel between them. <laughs> About I'm gonna the finances, read, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to read the top question that I think we can both kind of answer. So okay. Mullet has put, has Farker wasted all of that money since he's been there? Or has Weber... Is it a uh, is it an either or scenario of bad recruitment or bad management that has seen you blow such a massive advantage since Farker has been there? So let me let me discuss this because it's a very easy dig from Ipswich fans to say. So we're well, talking parachute. We're talking parachute. We're talking how come we've sold thirty five million pounds worth of talent and only brought in five million? Basically, we're in the Premier League. We signed the likes of Ricky Van Walkswinkle for eight and a half million. This Leroy is Fair. 13, 14. Yeah. So this is like 2013, 2014, 2015. We were signing these big players, big players, they never turn out to be, trying to chase the Premier League dream. And when you're in the Premier League, you go up, you don't have much time to plan. So it's kind of like, right, let's sign What's these available up. now? Yeah. yeah. Um, so we've got these big money players who we've signed on big fees and also big wages and on long-term contracts. So... You know, we're still paying off Stephen Naismith's wages. We're still paying off Tim Close's wages. Despite he's playing, he's, we're paying Premier League wages. So you've then got, when you fall from the Premier League into the Championship, your revenues just fall off a off Despite a your high attendances. But, uh, the TV money, didn't we? Like, yeah. Ticket sales make up such a sm- small percentage. For Premier League clubs, they do, don't yeah. they? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, of course, we've got money coming in other revenues but our main bulk was TV revenue and when you go from the Premier League to the Championship it, it goes you've then got a problem you're still paying out the same you were when you were earning that money but you're earning much less so you're paying out 40 grand a week for Stephen A. Smith when the average wage in the Championship is I don't know five grand I don't know the exact stats so you're then left after a little while if we would have bounced straight back it would have been fine with a big deficit we're still paying Russ Martin's wages. We're still paying up to last season Kyle Lafferty's wages. We're still probably paying off Yusuf Malumbu's wages. So we've got a Premier League wage bill that is slowly changing with championship earnings. It was like if we were going, if I was going out and living the lifestyle of David Beckham, earning my wage, I'm going to be in a big deficit. It's like simple finance. But what that has meant is the money that we've brought in from Madison has simply just paid our debts off. Mm. Um, and we're now kind of breaking even. So no, Weber's done extremely well. Um, Farker has done okay to coach players. He's taken a Madison that was on loan from Aberdeen and made him into a twenty-five million pound player. Whether that was all of his work goes um, is unseen. But he's taken an Onel Hernandez who we signed for five hundred grand, and I'm sure we'll sell for six, seven million in the summer. So it's kind of like, is he a good coach for that? But not replicating it on the pitch. So it that weird stigma around us. Where's the money gone? It's gone paying our debts off. You look at you have to look at Dave McNally to blame. You don't look at Stuart Weber, and it, that, that's what always annoys me. Was well, Dealey's pocketing the money? There's no money to pocket. <laughs> it, the, the finances, like Ipswich, like any other football league club, are made public. You just have to look at them. Yeah. And yes, they're very boring to look at, but you can see exactly where the money has gone. It's not. We're not in a situation like Sunderland were, where I saw a fantastic um, little nugget. They were spending something like four grand a month on gardeners to put like plants (laughs) in the offices and stuff. You know, we're not wasting money; we're just paying off stupid decisions. And I guess it's the same with you. I could say, "Where's the money for Waghorn gone? Where's the money for Webster gone?" Mm. I'm sure it's just paying off. I think I think the um, the argument he's possibly making is the much publicised forty five million pounds a year wage bill when you came down yeah. I think that's what he's calling the financial advantage but what from what you're saying is the parachute money it doesn't isn't cover just it. a nice little bonus in your pocket well essentially it's we never got parachute to cover your because whatever were, the deficit yeah comes. so we didn't have I don't know how much parachute payments are but say they're advertised as 40 million that's simply just paying off wages and stuff mm. we haven't got a 40 million pound pot to go out and spend we kind of just wasted that through so I guess it was mismanagement, but it hasn't been from this regime. I think from the last regime. I think what most people's perception is, is that when you're relegated from the Premier League, the first year you're down is your absolute best chance. Yes. And then it gets exponentially yes. worse, yeah. you know, considerably worse every year because the parachute payment's half. And I think a big mitigating factor for Norwich is they were only up for one season. So they didn't get the full three years. Yes parachute because they were up and then down again because they'd already had yeah. a parachute the previous and year. And also we 
the season we got relegated was the final season of the old TV payment. So if we would have stayed up another season, the TV that revenue like essentially higher. doubled. So we missed Which out on that massive the difference. chunk as well. Yeah. So it's kind of like it was it was all completely our fault. But it's very easy to kind of throw the well, where's the money gone? Well, just look at accounts. Okay. It's not hard. Um, Josh, uh, are you coming down to Portman Road thinking it will be a tougher game this season? Yes. Are you expecting a slightly easier game? I guess is the flip side to that question. Don't. All I expect from Norwich is that my tummy will hurt. I'll be emotionally ruined in yeah. some possible way and we'll lose. <laughs> That's all I expect from Derby Day, I'm afraid. Um, we've already touched on this. Kevin asks, do you regret not recognising what a quality manager Chris Hewton is? He's done the common thing of putting Chris Houghton at Hewton. Um, <laughs> but yet yeah, you booed him out. Um, when he was in charge no I don't regret it at all he took us to our highest place finish but it was also one of the least enjoyable seasons Richard very similar to exactly yeah. way too many potential similarities here with our previous I think sometimes you need to dip out from the outside and say look you know you know, you watch it every week it was kind of like I was, I, I like McCarthy for multiple reasons and because he's he funny you, yeah and, and, <laughs> and he helped Norwich Okay, so Tackerman asks, um, if Farker got the sack, would I rather have a boring manager like Mick McCarthy that will keep them in division, maybe take them up, or an exciting manager like Paul Hurst that may not get the results? Also, what will Norwich City fans that ridiculed the club for getting Mick McCarthy, what will Norwich City fans who ridiculed Ipswich for getting rid of Mick McCarthy say if Paul Hurst gets his first win on Sunday? Um, I did it. Oh, it's a tough one, this, isn't it? Like, so many Norwich fans have said, well, I'd much rather have a Tony Pulis or a, you know, we've talked about it, a, a Sam Allardyce or someone who will kind of, you don't know what you get. Well, you do know what you get. You know exactly get what you're going to get. Yeah. Like, will probably take you in the playoffs. And But do you want to sit through? I suppose it's like, we've, we've, we've talked about it a lot. Would we take Chris Hewitt back? Well, yeah, because he'd probably deliver results, but it'd be crap football. So Context is all, isn't it? Yeah, it's, but yeah. it's interesting. Like, why do you go to football? Do you go to be entertained or do you go to win? And what's the balance? Well, everyone enjoys when, when you win. Um, but, but do they? Like, if you're constantly scraping like a 1-0 win and then you'll lose and then a 1-0 win... We beat Preston 3-0 last season before the international break. The first half of that was one of the worst halves of but football. But that that's an anomaly, isn't it? Like, I've you ever won. seen. Yeah. And then we scored three quick goals. No, we scored at the end of the first half. I don't I don't know. I really, unless, you, unless you're in, put in the position, you know... To, to see something very entertaining and lose and I mean you saw a 4-3 I assume you were irritated at the end of it but I, I was entertained yeah of course I wouldn't want to see 4-3 defeats all season but it's no. like it's like under Lamb but we lost a lot of games 3-2 but we also won a lot, a lot of games 3-2 mm. so it's kind of like yeah I don't know um, Tackerman also asked one more has the feedback from both sides been taken regarding Chris's attitude the last time <laughs> this happened and is that why he's not here no it isn't he's simply in a different location and hundreds of miles away um Admittedly, we probably got the tone of last year's podcast wrong. I think people who watch Chris regularly know what he was trying to do, and we also discussed it. He was the kind of what do you devil's call it? advocate. He was, yeah, he was. Yeah. He was the man who was trying to wind you up, and it Failed didn't come miserably. across that well. <laughs> but on the flip side, the podcast done really well. So it was quite entertaining, get... wasn't it? But uh, when Jack asked me, the first thing I asked was, "Can we please get Chris on?" Because that was really fun last yeah. year. So, but yeah, no. It, Chris is fine. And we're all friends, all, all three of us. Of course, way, yeah, so. definitely. Um, I'm going to try and find one last question. Uh, okay, this is a good one to finish on, actually. Alex Griffin. Um, Jack, when do you see Norwich back good in YouTuber, the... YouTuber, sorry, Jack. Oh, Alex. is he? Yeah, yeah. Check Shout out to yeah. Alex. Was he an Ipswich fan? Yeah. Good man. Uh, when do you hope to see Norwich back in the Premier League? Realistically, not in the near future, sadly. Um, and what are your thoughts on signing of ex Ipswich Town player Jordan Rhodes? Was really dubious about it, first of all. Quite like him now. I think he's a good player. For you, what's your score prediction for the big game on Sunday? Mm. And let's move on, actually. Let's get our score predictions in and predictions and oh, talk about the Sunday's dear. game. Well, if the first month is anything to go by, we will concede a goal from a corner. Okay. So we're going to have to score at least two to win. Um, we haven't been... Everything needs to flip for us to win because we haven't been scoring and we've been conceding for set plays. Yeah. So um, if we beat you, we won't thrash you. Okay. You know, we'll, it will be it will be tight if we do beat you. Um, I'm kind of with you. I just hope it's not a draw. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's, uh, so no. you say that despite all of these. I've seen all of these Twitter questions going. Hurst, this really exciting manager, and such a difference. But you're saying 
won't be free flowing. We won't score many. We haven't scored many well, this season. I'm right? just where where I take that question. Yeah. I'm just saying on the evidence. Okay. We're not scoring, so okay. it would have to be a big a big flip for us to all of a sudden score beat you three one or something. Does that also mean that on the evidence, Hurst isn't an exciting manager? I think he can be an exciting manager. The wingers are yeah. encouraged to to dribble. The midfielders are encouraged to push on. The problem is at the moment. What I saw in pre season was. Uh, centre half split, full backs forward, wingers come inside a little bit. Yeah. Uh, one of these goes forward, one of these sits and pass the ball quickly. That's that's quite hard to do with championship players. Yeah. So I hope the case is that it will click. Yeah. But you asked me at the start of the pod, will it not click? It's a possibility that yeah. it doesn't click. I ju- I'm, I'm just wrong. seeing so many similarities here, and it's kind of like if to Fark. Fark. If Fark is style of football works it will be beautiful but it's so idealistic maybe that's a lesson to us maybe fans. it is and may- maybe that's the but Jack we've spent five years seeing the know, ball no, be not... booted yes, into the channels and Freddie Sears chasing it and for one of those years Daryl Murphy happened to chest most of them down and smash them in the top corner yeah. we're going to believe in the ideal no, completely... until we're proved that it doesn't work do you know that. what I mean and I, and I hope and I, well, I don't hope it works for you but I hope you do Hurst does go on because he's a likeable guy I'm just saying there's a lot of teams in this league trying to play a Bielsa style of football when it's not going to happen. And I think Norwich have fallen foul to that. We are playing a very idealistic style of football that will work one in five games. And there's a possibility yeah. that might be the case, end up being the case with Ipswich. Right, Sunday, let's get your score prediction in then. Oh, I can't do this. No, I you've got to. I, I get, know you don't like them, but I you're on here now. Well, I need to predict that Ipswich are going to win, don't I? Else I'll look. Yeah. Shall we say that let's go for a 3-2... So we'll concede from. You always take the lead at Portman Road. That's kind of the rules. Yeah, isn't it? we do. Um, yeah. So you're going to score from your first corner after we dominate the first twenty minutes. Okay. So you'll score. So Hanley from yeah, the corner. Yeah, I'll take that. Right then, we'll equalise just before half time. Um, someone wearing blue will score. <laughs> then we'll go two and up. Then Jordan Rose will score the goal off his butt okay. on eighty-five minutes, and then. We will sign John Walters five minutes before <laughs> on loan from Burnley and he's going to come on and score the winner. Nice. That's a score prediction for you. And Knudsen surely got a score in there somewhere. <laughs> he um, always seems to score it. Well, yeah, he's got, he's got two goals. I think there is... No, he scored against Barnsley. Two okay. out of his three goals. And he also against. cracked the woodwork last year. <laughs> no, I don't know what he yeah. did. It was a great strike as well. You would have had strike. a better view from yeah, a where you were sitting strike. there. Than, yeah. than, no, what, do you, what do you think? Um... Uh, well, I've said it, I think we're going to lose. Um, I think it will be... Uh, to be fair, your prediction, except for the John Walters bit, which was <laughs> magically actually happened, does oh. sound kind of like it would be so remini- It would be so Norwich for us to like Jordan Rose to score an equaliser, him to be the hero, um, and then for us to just kind of come back. Jack, we're brittle though. Priority. We're brittle. Psychologically, we're, we're brittle. For us to win, and all joking aside about the 3-2 thing, we we need things to go for us. We're not going to be good if you we do as well. <laughs> if you take the lead, and this could it's be just two very nervous. Jack, yeah, things. this could yeah. be the derby of the one who's. Am I to swear on here? Yeah. The one whose least shit will win. Yeah. And they could yeah. both be bad or average, you know. And it could, that could be it. They could mm. both be so nervous and. Mm. Imagine our first set play, knowing that yeah, knowing that we've been, you know, and you bring up big Hanley mm. and closer and Rhodes and. It, it's, no, it's, it's going to be fascinating, and I genuinely think this result will set the ball rolling for the rest of the season. It's a big way it goes. possibility. So what is going to happen is it's going to be 1-1 and nothing really changes. No, no that's, that's, of course it'll be. Uh, anyway, thank you so much for watching. This has been a special little edition of the TNC podcast. Go over to Ben's channel, link to the description. Um, loads of the best Can I just plug content. our preview show? Yeah, definitely. That yeah. will be very neutral. Um, Harry will have been on the Pinkin and everything... Okay. To get all your views, he'll, he'll, he'll have watched this and he'll quote... Is he a bit of a stat man? Oh, yes. Okay, right. <laughs> he'll quote you on there. So I'll just, I'll just plug our, our preview show that will be out on Friday. But sorry, So is that again. YouTube? That'll be YouTube, iTunes. Acast, iTunes, all, all of the above. And can I just say, since the last podcast, I went to Fulham, uh, Norwich Fulham, um, just to watch you guys and I like, I like Fulham. Yeah. And I was stopped four or five times in the Barclay and by Norwich fans Brilliant. saying trip, trip my hand no yeah, one yeah. spat at me or anything <laughs> I had emails on the last one yeah. saying so thank you for watching we can have an adult conversation yeah. 
Um, you know, and it's it's all all, all fun across the cord and yeah. like this, but it gets a like you get to a. It was great last season. Did you get some man. good feedback from? Yeah, no, fans? definitely. Yeah, so. Um, no, so thank you to all of the Ipswich fans who've come over, and hopefully we've proven that you can have kind of a. A lot of Ipswich fans watch your content. They may be yeah, doing it hiding. Yeah, yeah. You know no, it happens, know, though, don't you? And they make up the majority of my ad revenue, so thank you very much. <laughs> um, yeah, see you later. Bye-bye.